Welcome ladies, it's a new year and it's a new show dedicated to you. Welcome to the first ever Mommy Helper Show. In a fast paced, busy world where we're filled with obligations towards your family, Consider this your weekly therapy, a place where you can sit back, unwind, and learn how to take better care of you. Kickstart your year on a healthy note. We're gonna to talk to a nutrition expert who will tell us what we should have in our kitchen cabinets to make sure we are eating healthy all year long. Next up, meet mompreneur Sharin Vinayak, who runs a high-end couture shop in New York. She raises two children at home and is still able to put a hot meal in front of her husband every single night. And lastly, get your stupid news. If you think you've made mistakes in the past, trust me, it doesn't hold a candle to some of the mistakes you're gonna hear about that moms have done coast to coast. So sit back, relax, because the next 30 minutes is all about you. Walk into any health food store this day or even down a health food aisle at your local grocery store and you're probably going to spend more than your paycheck on items you have no clue how to use. Today we're here at Health Nut in New York City speaking to a nutritional expert on how to stay healthy, buy the right things, and you know what? Not have to spend a fortune doing it. I'm standing with nutritional coach Natasha Bala who's going to talk to us a little bit about how we can stay healthy and the essential things we need in our kitchen cabinet to continue a healthy lifestyle. Natasha, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. So, tell me something. I, I mean, I come from a very traditional Indian household mm -hmm. where we need to have mutton and chicken and naan and roti. I mean, what am I doing wrong? What can I take out from this equation to make my life healthy? Yeah, I think the thing, it's more about adding in rather than taking out. I'd rather add vegetables and make meals healthier rather than taking things out. So Natasha, what should I always have in my refrigerator? I think you should always have kale. Kale is an excellent vegetable to add to pretty much any dish, and it's very high in vitamins, especially vitamin K, which is really important for our bones to maintain them and keep them strong. And especially for moms with kids, kale is important to keep their children's bones very strong and healthy. Kale is also considered a nutritional powerhouse, and studies have shown that people who eat kale are happier and more optimistic than people who don't. So that's but kale awesome. tastes gross. I don't think it tastes gross. Well, how do you make this thing? I mean, it looks all curly and wilt. What yeah, do you do? Yeah, there's a couple of different kinds. I like the curly one in particular because it's very crunchy. It's fun in salads. Um, so, of course, you can use it in a salad. But you can also include it, you know, when you make your aloo gobi and your... Um, any vegetable dish, pretty much. You can also so just, every sabzi, just chop it up you and can throw just it, use in. it in there, or paratas or whatever I make. Exactly, it just, but it doesn't taste tart. No, it doesn't. Okay. And the best part is, once you cook kale, it wilts down a little bit and it becomes much softer because when you said before, the kale sometimes have a, has a particular taste to it, but when you cook it, that taste goes away a little bit. So oh. if you're adding it to something else. It'll mask the spices you use. Everything you use will mask the and actual And you'll still taste have the same nutritional qualities Absolutely. that you need with the kale. Good to know. Absolutely. So I need to have kale in my kitchen yes, at all times. All, time. <laughs> all right. So Natasha, I've got kale in my fridge. What do I need in my cupboards? What you need in your cupboard is turmeric. Okay. Well, being Indian, we already have yeah. turmeric, right? Most desis are very familiar with turmeric because we already use it in our curries and our other dishes. However, most don't know why it's such an important and potent spice. I call it the super spice. And I also call it the anti-spice, meaning that it's antiviral, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory. And especially for a family with kids, these are very important because kids get sick often. You know, they've got all the germs. Sure. And if you put a tablespoon of turmeric into a warm glass of water or milk twice a day, when you feel a cold coming on, it will knock that cold right out. Oh, so and you won't even get sick. So especially better than for kids, vitamin C much better than vitamin C. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay, so I've got kale in my fridge, turmeric in my cupboards, but now when it comes to eating healthy, we're all grown up eating dal chawal or right. khichdi, and we're told that white rice is not good for you mm -hmm. anymore. It's too starchy, it's too fattening. Exactly. Um, brown rice is not my favorite. It's a kind of hard thing to get a, mm -hmm. you know, get you wrap your mouth around. What else would you recommend we can have dal with? Oh, I've got a great substitute for white rice, and that's quinoa. What is quinoa? Quinoa is a grain, and it's high in protein. It's actually a complete protein, so it's excellent for vegetarians in particular. Quinoa has 
a lot of vitamins, including um, vitamin E, vitamin C, and it's got selenium and zinc in it, which are really important minerals for our body. The best thing about quinoa that I like is that it supports your heart, your lungs, and your kidneys. So it's so much more healthy for you than white rice is. All the way, I would make khichdi, I would add the masalas, the mm -hmm. turmeric, the, the dhania powder, the salt, the pepper, everything's the exact same. Everything is exactly the same. Okay. Yeah, I actually make khichdi a lot now with quinoa rather than rice, and I absolutely love it. You know, we talked a little bit before about taste mm -hmm. and converting our high eccentric taste buds mm -hmm. into something that's healthy. And I know I have a hard time doing it myself. I can only imagine telling my children and my kids what, you know, and my husband to change their tastes. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend we do with finicky eaters? Well, I think the thing is to go step by step. You don't want to all of a sudden introduce, you know, seven different things at one meal and then everyone's going to kind of freak out about it. You want to do it step by step. One week, add kale. Make kale, you know, the topic of the week. Introduce your kids to it. Tell them why it's good for them. Tell them it's going to make them strong and do well at school. Um, and same thing with your husband. No nagging. Just tell him why it's good for him and do one thing at a time. I wouldn't introduce everything all at once. And the other thing that is really great about Indian cooking is that you use a lot of spices. So although you may not like the taste of kale, once you add kale to your aloo sabzi or whatever other sabzi you're making, it really masks the taste of kale and it tastes fantastic. And same thing with quinoa. Quinoa absorbs all of the spices and tastes great. It tastes just like your typical Indian dish. When we come back, our food coach tells us how to shop smart in the frozen food aisle. Welcome back. So far, Natasha has told us what we need in our cupboards to stay healthy all year round. But now, sometimes we don't have time to cook a fresh meal every single night. Natasha's gonna take us through the frozen food aisle of your grocer's freezer and tell us what you can buy and what you can have on hand for a quick, healthy meal anytime. So Natasha, there are times when I get home and I have no time to cook and get my kids to bed at a decent hour. What would you recommend I do? I completely understand that. Sometimes it's hard after you've been working all day to come home and cook. And the freezer aisle is an excellent place to turn to at any grocery store, including health food stores. Some of my favorite things include chicken patties or soy patties from the grocery store frozen food section. Um, today I found a non pizza, which is very fun and perfect for us Indian people who are missing our Indian food during the day. <laughs> um, I also love things with vegetables because you're getting your vegetables in, you're getting the nutrients from the vegetables, so that's absolutely important. One thing I would watch for though when you're getting these frozen meals is the sodium level. You want to try to stay as low as possible and you also want to watch the sugar content and try to keep that low. What's low? Um, I think it depends on the food and I would like to say under 300 grams of sodium. And for sugar, again, it depends on the meal, but at least try to stay under 15. Being Indian, we all love our chai first thing in the morning. We sure it, do. But is it the best thing to have first thing in the morning? Is there another alternative? All teas are great for you. The thing about the chai that we make at home is that it's got a lot of sugar and it's got a lot of milk in it. Yes. So I recommend replacing that chai with green tea. Green tea is an herbal tea, so you don't need the milk, you don't need the sugar in it, and it's very high in antioxidants, which is very important for our body. And it also has a substance called EGCG, which prevents cancer, fights cardiovascular disease, and even helps in weight loss, which you know we all want these days. <laughs> um, the other great thing about green tea is that it fights the symptoms of colds and the flu. So if you have two to three cups when you're feeling sick, and even when your kids are feeling sick, if you give them tea regularly, replace that with this one, oh. because it will help them get over that infection sooner. So Natasha, when I walk into a health food store like mm -hmm. this, I am overpowered by, I don't know what to buy, what is good for me. I end up spending more than my paycheck yeah. on everything I can find. Mm -hmm. And then I get home and I don't even know how to use this stuff. Right. So if I'm going to walk into a store like this today, and let's say there's something I've never tried before, what should I try? I think you should try chia seeds. What's chia seeds? It sounds like a pottery bond. <laughs> It sounds like something you get out of like yeah, a, a like a chia bond. pet. Yeah, like a exactly, chia pet. Does like it a grow? Chia pet. Um, if I rub it, no. It it unfortunately won't, but <laughs> it will help your body grow in the right way. Oh, so that's actually good. What what is this? Um, so chia seed is a seed that is very high in fiber, protein, and it has omega threes in it. And I'm sure you've heard of omega threes and how important they are yeah. for our brains. 
Our brains are actually made up mostly of fat, about 60% fat, and chia seeds supply us with that omega-3 that's really important for us. Wow. Yeah. So I can and actually get smarter by using this? I, I absolutely think so, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Now how do you use this? Do you cook it? Um, you can cook it. The great thing about these seeds is that they don't have a taste. So you can add them to virtually anything and you know it won't ruin the flavor of what you're eating. Also when they get a little bit wet they become a little bit jellish. So you can add them into soups. You can add them into anything that you want to thicken up a little bit. And they also are great to make puddings with. So the kids will definitely enjoy that. Wow. So yes. this is something I should definitely have in my basket. I absolutely think so. Good to know. Yeah. Sure, it's hard enough being a mom. Then you're a mom with a career. Then you're a mom who decides to open up their own business. Mommypreneurs are not the easiest things to be. And today we're sitting with one of the experts. Shirin Vinayak. Shirin, thanks for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about your business. When did you open up Shanai Couture? So, summer 2014, Shanai Couture is going to be 10 years old. Wow. So, 10 years ago, you didn't have kids. I didn't. It, it, at this point, when I think back to it, it feels like a different, different time, a different life entirely. I don't necessarily know if I would have the courage to start off with kids as young. But it was a good time. We'd just gotten married. Responsibilities were low. There were no babies to run helter-skelter after. And it took off. It worked for me. Why, why couture clothing for Indians? So essentially, I'm from India, born and brought up. Um, I came here about 15 years ago to start off my master's. Very close ties back to India and to Bombay. And to me, it was daunting, the fact that we have such a strong South Asian community. But 10 years ago, there was nothing in terms of what we could wear and what we could buy in the country or in the area. Um, trends still seem to be like they were 15 years ago. It felt like India moved ahead and we didn't. And so trying to set up a passion project, just, this just kind of seemed like the thing to do. How many years later did the kids come along? Uh, we started the business 2004 and my son was born 2006 and my daughter 2009. So we got a good two and a half years. And when the kids came along, tell me about the biggest challenge. Oh my God. Uh, the first one coming along was like I got hit by a truck. What happened? Um, businesses take up all your time. I'm a workaholic by nature. I was happy to do 14-hour days. And this is like your first baby. It belongs to you. You build it. You make it. You pretty much give birth to it. So the idea of now being able to manage time and responsibility and love for both was just extremely hard. How did you do it? I had some help, but very loving, reliable help. And I had a lot of support from family. I want to say that the biggest thing to kind of understand is that you need to be able to balance the phases in life. So from the time that we started off till the time that my son was born, we'd grown to a certain amount. And we were making an effort to get onto that growth chart. But once my son came along, the idea was to just give him the time that he needed, his first year, year and a half, two years, and be able to continue with the business. It wasn't necessarily a growth path, but I was fine with that. And it was a choice that I made. Um, and then I had my daughter. So we kind of did that again for a little bit. But they're a little older now, so you can kind of jump back onto the bandwagon and start to do the growth process. What sacrifice have you made for your business and for your family? I mean, you couldn't do both successfully all the time, could you? I work retail. I have for 10 years. I work Saturdays. I work later hours in the evenings. I am not necessarily there when my kids need to go to every karate class and soccer class and dance practice. And it feels bad sometimes. But the theory behind this is when you're trying to be a businesswoman and an entrepreneur, you need to do justice to it and you need to do it well. And then when you're trying to be a mom, the hardest thing to do is to disconnect from that business and be able to be the mother that you're trying to be. Um, so my kids miss us, miss me on the weekends. They miss the fact that I'm not there on every Saturday when all the other mommies are out running in the soccer field with their kids. But it's what they've seen, and I try to involve them as much as I can. They come into the studio with me. Uh, my sons always ask me to be able to attend a show, and our March show was a very big deal for us. And for the first time ever, I had the two of them come in. So they were able to see what we do, um, and that helps. But they miss their mommy, and there's a lot of moments that I miss. But you make your choices, and then you just kind of do the best that you can with it. Are you at peace with your choices? I am. Part of it, I feel like I've done this for so long. It's a part of me. I don't know how else I would run my, my, my life. I'm, I love being a mom, but I feel like I need to do a little bit for myself as well. And it's not because I want to be selfish. It's because I want to be human. I'm, I'm a better person, and I'm a better mom for the fact that I work, and I do something that I'm passionate about. 
Coming up next week, learn what clothes will flatten your figure. Couture expert Sharin Vinayak gives you the inside scoop on how to dress to make you look the best. If you have a viewer watching right now who's desperate to start her own business, no matter what it may be, but is confused as to how she's going to make peace with the fact of being a mom and an entrepreneur, what's your best advice? It's not going to be easy, but you just have to do it. There's never a perfect time. There's never a perfect scenario. There's never a perfect anything. It's like when you're planning your babies and you know, you keep waiting that, oh, next year's gonna be perfect and then something comes up and then the following six months is gonna be perfect and something comes up. There's never a perfect time. So I feel like starting off a business is, is similar. There's never a perfect time, but you have to be completely passionate about it and devoted to the fact that you're gonna make it work. Be patient give it your best and just do what you need to do. Believe me, your family, your kids, you yourself, you'll just pace yourself out and you'll understand how to get through it. You mentioned that you're originally from India. Yes. And being a South Asian woman comes with a lot of additional responsibilities yes. that many other women may not understand. Totally. Going home, making sure dinner is ready, yes. um, relying on the fact that you have to do pretty much all the household chores. How do you manage living in this country and still holding on to those roots from India? So my husband and I are both from India, which means that essentially both of us in some odd way have that stereotypical mindset of the fact that the woman, whether she's working or she's not, she runs the home. She takes care of the kids, she looks after the dinner, she makes sure the laundry's done and his shirts are ironed. Um, sometimes it's not as easy, to be honest. There's, there's days when the kids are not happy and he's not happy. Part of it is being able to make them understand that this is what I want to do and what I need to do for myself. And knock on wood, I'm lucky. I mean, despite you know, despite the thought process that I'm supposed to be the responsible parent for it, my husband's understanding enough to give me the space to do what I want to do. And this was a discussion that we had before we started the business and then before we had the kids. And because it's always been like that, I think we just kind of play the game as it goes along. I have a wonderful nanny and I have to learn to trust and I have to learn to delegate. I have fabulous people that work the store for me so I trust them to do what's right when I'm not there and I have good childcare for my kids and I trust them to look after my kids well when I'm not there. I'm not, the worst thing you can do to yourself is keep second guessing the choices that you make. You make them and you trust yourself that you made the best that you could. Not necessarily the right one but the best that you could understand and that's fine. What are your hopes and dreams for the next 10 years? I want to grow. Now I want to grow. Now my kids are four and seven. Um, not that this is an easier challenge in life, but the challenge is different. I'm not running home to, to feed them and to bathe them and to do all of those things. Their schedules are different and I'm trying to manage. Um, I, I want to be able to grow the business more. I feel like I ran the business well. We have a fabulous brand and we've done very well for ourselves and, I, and, and I'm extremely proud of it. It's my first baby, I should be. I worked very hard for it. But I didn't grow it as fast as I could have. And only because, like I said, you need to make a choice and that was my phase to be the mommy. Now it's my phase to pick up. For a very long time it was about sustaining ourselves and doing the gradual growth. But now it's time to grow. Excellent, thank you so much. One tatted up tattoo artist mom took her love for ink a little too far, and she probably shouldn't have brought her work home. Odessa Clay, 30 years old, of North Carolina, admitted she tattooed her daughter last year with an outline of a tiny heart. Yahoo Shine reports that Clay wasn't arrested until last September. In the case of Clay, who moonlights as a tattoo artist, she says her daughter asked for the body art and Clay insists the girl did not feel any pain, adding it didn't even fill in. Celebrity moms are not immune to getting caught acting stupid. Legally blonde actress Reese Witherspoon showed the world just how silly she can be when she was arrested earlier this year. Us Magazine reports Witherspoon even tried to pull the mom card by falsely claiming she was pregnant and needed to use the restroom. Tisk tisk, Reese, didn't your mom teach you better? Stars of the hit reality show Toddlers and Tiaras, Isabel and her 
pageant friends danced around like Lady Gaga while wearing very skimpy clothing. But here's what makes this story even more bizarre than prancing toddlers. Isabel's mom, Susanna Barrett, openly sexualized her five-year-old daughter to make Isabella the focus point of the dance. 